divine Messiah. The world in silence waits the day when hope shall sing its triumph and sadness flee away. Dear Savior, haste, come, come to earth, dispel the night and show your Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. On this fourth Sunday of Advent, we take advantage of our last little spurt of preparation for this holy night, which is already upon us. We ask our Lord through the help of Mary and Joseph to prepare our hearts tonight for this Mass, begging his mercy now as we call to mind those things which have not prepared our hearts for Christmas and asking for his forgiveness. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace and the Lord had given him rest from the, his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, here I am living in a house of cedar while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, Go do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, should you build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be commander of the people of Israel. I have been with you wherever you went, and I have destroyed all of your enemies before you, and I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for my people Israel. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. 
Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old. Since the time I first appointed judges over my people, Israel, I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to him who can strengthen you, according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret for long ages, but now manifested through the prolific writings and according to the command of the eternal God made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith. To the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace. The Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with the man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. The fourth Sunday of Advent. It's always a little weird, isn't it? You feel like, you know, the world is so ready for Christmas and banging down the door for Christmas and we're still in the fourth week of Advent. Like, Father, where are the Christmas decorations? Well, because we're still in the fourth week of Advent. 
And it's always a little bit weird. And we even switch gears. We've been going through the prophet Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah. And tonight we get this, the prophet Samuel. But I think it's the right, the, the perfect thing for this final stretch, exactly what we need to hear. King David stops and pauses and thinks and observes, and he says, hmm, that was a good thought. I'm in a house made of cedar when the Ark of the Covenant is in a tent, still in a tent after all these years. Just like it was when Moses came across and the journey through the desert, it's still in a tent. But I'm in a nice palace. I need to do something about that. God, I want to do something about that. I want to, I want to build something great for you. It's a good thought, right? I think if we were in that situation, we would probably think exactly the same way. It's, it's a very logical even, you know, good human way of thinking. And God says, uh-uh. He always has to come in and do things different. He always needs to come in and to remind us, no, not the way you think do, is the way that I think. It's always making us change gears. That's why having a relationship with God sometimes is so frustrating and so, whew, you always have to adjust to Him. Because he's God. <laughs> I think he knows better than we do. And so was the case with, uh, with David. I mean, this wonderful thought. And he says, no, David, I think you need to think about something here. I'm not going to have a house the way you would make a house. I want you to remember... I was guiding you out of slavery of Egypt through that tent. That's what I chose. When I'm going to come to be born, I'm going to come to be born not in an inn, not in a hotel, in a cave. When I'm out there preaching, I will have no place to rest my head. It's as if God likes to be in this place where he doesn't have a roof over his head. As if that's God's way, preferred way to deal with us. If you think about it, it's, God's, it's kind of God's way of saying, I will not be domesticated. You can't make me your little pet so that you can have me in your home and put a nice roof over me and decorate things for me. I'm God. I will always be beyond what you want to shrink me down into. There will always be something that expands beyond what you think that I am. I'm always going to stretch you. I am the protagonist of history and I am faithful to my promises. Just look at the way he spoke to David and then the way the angel spoke to Mary. It says, beautiful, I promise, I fulfill my promise. I promise, I fulfill my promise. He tells David, I will raise up your heir after you. I will raise up your heir. To Mary, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Most High will shatter you, sh overshadow you. The heir won't be a human heir. I will be the protagonist of that heir. Then he tells David, I will make his kingdom firm. And then a thousand years later, the angel says to Mary, of his kingdom, there will be no end. Promises, keeping up with his promises. Now it takes him a thousand years because that's the way God does. He takes his time. He thinks about things differently than we do. 
but he is faithful. And he is the protagonist. He will do things in his way and in his time because he knows best. Then he tells David, I will be a father to him. Therefore, what he says to Mary, the child will be born and will be called the Son of God. There he is, making his plans and fulfilling his plans in ways which if you don't step back and there's not a sense of, okay, God, you're in the driver's seat here, then we forget about it. We get mixed up. We don't even see what he's doing. So, in our Advent, maybe you come to this fourth week of Advent and you go, wow, I've done really good this year. I've really worked hard. I really feel really prepared. And God says, hmm. Or maybe you come into the Advent and you go, I haven't done anything. This is going to be the worst Christmas for me being prepared. And God goes, hmm. Maybe it's not about all the stuff that you do. In these last four or five days of Advent, let me be the protagonist. Let me be the one who calls the shots. Be more receptive, collaborative, not the one having to make things happen. Advent is that sense of humble receptivity, humble collaboration. That's what the fourth week of Advent calls us back and reminds us again. God is the protagonist. So two ways to help us to be more receptive in these last five days of Advent. First one, strange, sounds strange, but when you're about to go and have a big feast, it makes sense that you don't eat a lot before that because you're preparing an appetite by preparing an empty stomach, preparing hunger fast. Some simple way of fasting in these last five days. Something you give up. Something to create a little bit of hunger. So there's that sense of, I feel needy for what only God can give. In a way that only he can satisfy my heart. Second thing, if you really want to be able to fit more in your stomach for a great feast... Another way, it's a little bit more, not the way we normally think about things. Eat more. Stretch your stomach out so that when you come to that time and you're putting all that food down in it, your stomach's actually bigger because it's already stretched out. That's kind of the way it works, right? We can actually make our appetite grow by eating more. So you can take that version of, of giving God, of making yourself more receptive and give more time to prayer in these next five days. Give more cheerfulness, even though you don't feel like it, even though it's Corona Christmas and everybody's plans are getting shot. Still have that extra cheer. Put that in. Push yourself. Stretch yourself. Simple ways to give God more protagonism, to be more receptive in these last few days of Advent. Dear baby Jesus, you are my king and my ruler. In just a few days, you'll come looking to come into my heart like never before, at least a little deeper, a little more than last year. May St. Joseph not be sad when he comes knocking at the door of my heart this Christmas. May he find extra room for you and the Holy Family. Amen.
We stand as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. Where the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, and who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now lift up our petitions to our Heavenly Father, trusting ever in his care. For the church throughout the world, may it grow in fidelity to God's will, adopting the prayer of Mary. May it be done according to your word. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations, may they serve with humility and integrity as they address the needs of their people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all families praying for or anticipating the birth of a child, may they receive abundant support. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those caught in the web of addiction, may they find true healing and lasting peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick, for all who are lonely and depressed at this time of year, may they find hope and loving fellowship in this community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters who are departed, may they enjoy their eternal reward in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And today we pray for Jean Thomas, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And finally, a prayer for Jim and Betty Schwinker, who just after this final prayer will be renewing their wedding vows after 20 years of marriage. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you are always faithful. Your plan and your ways are always the best ways. Give us the faith to always believe in you and to receive from your hands what you know best through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jim and Betty, on the anniversary of that celebration at which you joined your lives in an abundant, in an in a unbreakable bond through the sacrament of matrimony, you now intend to renew before the Lord the promises you made to one another. Turn to the Lord in prayer that these vows may be strengthened by divine grace. Repeat after me. Blessed are you, Lord, for by your goodness I took Betty as my wife. I took Betty as my wife. 
Blessed are you, Lord, for by your goodness I took Jim as my husband. And together we repeat, blessed are you, Lord, for in the good and the bad times of our life, you have stood lovingly by our side. Help us, we pray, to remain faithful in our love for one another so that we may be true witnesses, so that we may be true witnesses to the covenant you have made with humankind. Amen. May the Lord keep you safe all the days of your life. May he be your comfort in adversity and your support in prosperity. May he fill your home with his blessings through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we'll renew the blessing on your wheat rings as well. Increase and sanctify, O Lord, the love of your servants, Jim and Betty, who once gave each other these rings as a sign of faithfulness, that they may always grow in the grace of the sacrament through Christ our Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. Congratulations. <laughs> And thank you for wanting to share your testimony of, of fidelity to each other and God's fidelity to you with, with us all today. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Virgin Mary. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him, 
as with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice as the mystery of his nativity, so that in the, at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, 
and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
spiritual communion. My Jesus, believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws near, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A few bullets and highlights. For the women who signed up for the next session of Walking with Purpose, you can pick up your book in the gathering space on your way out today. Students entering the Knights of Columbus poster contest should place their entry on the table also in the gathering space. And for those who are very eager to help with Christmas decorations here at church tomorrow at 2 p.m. after the Spanish Mass, we'll be decorating for Christmas and if anyone would like to come and, and give a hand, um, I know that Ellie Bogart uh, would really be happy to have an extra hand. Um, her and, and her husband, who's Bob, <laughs> would love to have your help. Uh, Christmas Mass times. Christmas Eve Mass will be at 5 p.m. Also at 10 p.m and Christmas Day Mass at 10 a.m., so 5, 10, and 10. As all of our Masses, there's the, the uh, different needs for, for uh, all that we've been following for our COVID regulations will continue to be held for that. However, there will be a change that you will be seated by an usher so that we can maximize the space that we have but still have the proper distance in between one family and the next. So you won't be able to sit your seat yourself, but you'll be seated by an usher when you arrive um, to help us with that. And then once the church fills up, we'll have extra seating in the small chapel, in the AB room, and also in the cafeteria. So we anticipate that should, that should take care of any kind of overflow um, from all of that. So. Very happy and with with everyone who's helped to to prepare all of those things. There will be television monitors in each of those places. We'll be able to bring uh, the the, uh, the Eucharist to each of those places. So even if you don't fit inside the church because you don't get it here, it's a first come first serve. Uh, if you don't get it as early as someone else, you'll still have a seat and you'll still be able to participate. Um, in a relatively close way and be able to receive the Eucharist. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. Almost there. Enjoy putting the final touches on your preparations. Hang some more tinsel in your heart and uh, bring the little Christ child some joy in just a few days. Bow your heads for God's blessing. May the almighty and merciful God by whose grace you have ple by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten son and yearn for his coming again sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with his blessing amen as you run the race of this present life may he make you firm in faith joyful in hope and active in charity amen so that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, 
you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Thank you.